One of the blessings, and that's one of the things I'm going to speak about this morning. How your cup overflows is with people. When the anointing comes upon your life, three things show up. Power, wisdom, and people. Power, wisdom, and people. To be bankrupt of any of them is to be poor. A powerful man without wisdom and without people is a poor man. A wise man without people, without power, is a poor man. When we talk about wealth and abundance, there are three elements that must be in it. Number one is what? Power. The Pentecostal church is, the charismatic church is already acquainted with power and all the rest. But then there's the dimension of wisdom apostle brought to us yesterday night. The wisdom of God. It says, what wisdom is this that these mighty works are done by it? But there's a third dimension. And that's the dimension of people. People. When the anointing rests upon every time in scripture, the anointing came upon a man. People always came. The anointing came upon David. People. Moses. People. Jesus. People. Glory to God. One of the things you're going to overflow with, when we say our cup runneth over, you are overflowing with supernatural helps. You're overflowing with the gift of men. I was praying earlier on this morning. I said, Lord, what will you have me say? I had gone to preach for one of my sons. He said, you thought that you were bringing a counsel to him. He said, that counsel is for you. I said, oh, okay. And I thought he was speaking to me. He said, no, it's not just for you. It's for the house. So your cup runneth over. One dimension you're going to see your cup running over is in the dimension of the gift of help of men. Of men. A man with all the money and who does not have men is a weak man. A man without money and who has men is a strong man. He's a strong man. And I believe very strongly that the words that have been spoken here are not just good words, they are impartations. So by the time you leave this place, you are living wealthy with men. Amen. Overflowing with men. In the name of Jesus. Please, you may be seated. And let's explore this very briefly this morning. Very, very brief, briefly this morning. So much has been said already. And I would to God that we give attention to everything that's been said. Conferences like this, conventions like this. God said, let Israel gather three times a year. He says, and I will bless them there. Is it that he could not bless them in their houses? He could bless them in their houses. But why do you think he said, I will bless them there? Because there's the gathering where he brings people together. And he wants to do something in their lives. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Let's start from there. Genesis, the 12th chapter and the first verse. If there's anybody who walked in this overflow, cup running over, was Abraham as well. David was one example. Abraham was another example. Little wonder in Romans chapter 4, they are the two examples that Paul gives us. What is it pertaining the flesh that Abraham our father had found? And then talks about David as well, the blessedness of the man to whom God will not impute iniquity. Romans, the fourth chapter. But look at what it says. It says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country from your kindred, from your father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Next verse, quickly. It says, and I will make of thee a great nation. God was going to make Abraham a great nation. Not I will provide for you. I will make of thee a great nation. Are you following what I'm saying here? Not I will meet your needs. What did he say? I will make of thee a great nation. It says, and verse 2, it says, I'll make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make your name what? Great. And thou shalt be what? A blessing. Can we read verse 2 together again? One to go. It says, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Can we personalize it now? One to go. He, God will make of me a great nation. He, he will bless me. He will make my name great. And I shall be a blessing. I think we can read it better now. <laughs> One to go. It says, God will make of me a great nation. He will bless me and make my name great. 
and I shall be a blessing. Now, everybody read verse 3, because verse 3 is how he will do it. Look at it. It says, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So he says, I will bless thee. Please sit down. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and all the rest. But then he said something very powerful. He said, what that blessing will do is it would attract people to you. It would attract people to you. Now, obviously, different kinds of people. There are those who will be angry with what God is doing. And there are those who will be excited with what God is doing. Some will curse, some will bless. And he says, I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse them that curse thee. And he says, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Can I put it to you? That everything that you're requiring, that you're seeking God for, is one person away from you. Just one relationship away from you. Please listen very carefully this morning. This overflow, the cup running over that we are talking about, it is people that God will use. It's humans. God is not going to come down from heaven. Did Esther's cup run over? Yes. Who was the instrument? Mordecai. Did Joseph's cup run over? Who was the instrument? The butler. No matter the gravity of your dream interpretation, the anointing to interpret dreams, save that somebody speaks of you in the palace, your dream will go to waste. Your dream will go to waste. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? The Lord woke me up one morning and I shared this with my wife. He said to me, he said, son, ministry grows on goodwill, not gifts. Goodwill. Businesses grow on goodwill, not gifts. Are you following what I'm saying here? Our lives are expanded on goodwill, not gifts. Another word you can use is favor. Another word you can use is favor. Look at Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. It's a short exhortation this morning. But the Lord has commanded me to bless in a certain way. He's commanded me to bless. He's commanded me to bless. Now, but so that you can release your faith for the blessing, it's important that I lay scriptural foundation for you. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah. God has commanded me to bless and God has commanded me to, re to reverse the lot of some. Now, you know, he says that the, the rod of the wicked can rest upon the lot I mean, talks about the rod of the wicked resting upon the lot of the righteous. He says, will not rest upon. In essence, the rod of the wicked can rest upon people's lots. Your lot is your cup, is your portion. But by the anointing, there's going to be a reversal today. Are you following what I'm saying here? There's going to be a reversal today. By the anointing, blessings are communicated via words. You heard what apostle said. The bishop laid hands and that's all. That's all. That's all. So I want us to be very sensitive this morning. Luke 2.52, he says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Everybody read that last sentence, want to go. And in favor with God and man. It's not enough to have favor with God. It's not enough. He says he increased in wisdom and stature. And in favor with God and man. Now, can I ask you a question, Omolade? If I say that Omolade has a pen and a book, is it, if you see her with just a pen, is that complete? In essence, if you say, please sit down, a pen and a book, what it simply means is you expect to see Omolade with a pen and a book. In the same way, there is favor with God and there is favor with man. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Eh? There's favor with God and there's favor with man. And the Lord told me in prayer, he said, many people are laboring not because they lack favor with me. They lack favor with men. Many people are laboring, struggling in life, not because they lack favor with me, but they lack favor with men. It says, he grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with man. Proverbs, the third chapter and the fourth verse. At his 60th birthday, Bishop David Oedekwe was asked, what's your greatest blessing in life? He said, well, I'll give you two answers. He said, my greatest blessing is people. My greatest cost is people. My greatest blessing is people. My greatest cost is people. My greatest blessing is people. My greatest cost is people. You know, 
Just one person that you meet can change your life completely. One person. I gave the example some time back about how that there are people today who are struggling with addictions that they did not make up their minds to go into. They just became friends with somebody in secondary school and the person said, come with me. The person said, try this. And like Pastor Ola and I were talking, you know, there are some children that they do it and they escape the consequences thereof. Have you met people like that? They cheat, they are never caught. They take banner and cocaine and everything, their head never turns. They are okay. They never get addicted. They smoke it, they graduate and they say, I want to clean up and they clean up. But some children, particularly children, Christian children, they are the ones that suffer the, the, the brunt thereof. So you have people, and I've counseled a lot of people, painfully so, who are laboring under things that they had no plan for. Just that they met the wrong person. The wrong person. Now, if the wrong person has that much power, how about the right person? If the wrong person has that much power, do you know there are marriages today that are suffering because of it? somebody somebody met in GS3? There are marriages today that they are suffering, going for counseling because of an association in their primary six. Are you getting what I'm saying here? If the wrong person has that much impact on your life and on your destiny, how much more the right, and to think that God will do what he wants to do in your life without using people is to be a proud man. To think that God will do what he wants to do in your life without using people is to be a proud man and to not even know how God works. I've shared this with us before. Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. What's the next thing he said? He said, whatsoever good you want men to do unto you, do it unto them. Uh, you just told us to pray. Then he said, whatsoever good you want men to do unto you, do it unto them. Because your prayers will be answered in men. That's what he's saying. Is somebody following me this morning? He says, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding where in the sight of God and who? Man. Say me in the sight of God and man. Now, we are faith people and it's very important to know that God is our source. So he says, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and with man. Acts chapter 2 verse 47. I'm showing you these scriptures here and there, just so that you see that, and I could give you at least 10 of them to see that the man part is important, not just God part. Acts 2, 47. Can we read together one to go? Praising God and having favor with all the people. All right, read that again. Praising God and having what? Favor with all the people. Read it one more time. Praising God and having favor with all the people. So there's something that's called favor with the people. Favor with the people. Now, it's an extensive study, but I will just speak one person particularly so that we can pray. One person so that we can pray. And his name is David. One person so that we can pray. Because your cup running over, one of the things the Lord will do is that as you leave this conference, supernatural help everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Mark my words, they will mention your names in the corridors of power places that you have no access to your name shall be called men will carry your matter on their head I said men will carry your matter on their head as you leave this conference you will be shocked at how men will carry your matter on their head. Amen. Who said you have to pay for it? Who actually said you have? Who told you? The problem is you think you have a money problem. No, you don't have a money problem. One person can pay for it. One person. One person can pay for it. You don't have a money problem. You don't have a house problem. Pastor Abraham, you don't have a house problem. You don't have a money problem. You don't, listen, that's not your problem. No. One person, the right person. One person who is under compulsion of God. 
Are you following what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Who is under a sworn oath of God until I bless this lady, until I bless this man, I am not resting. Now, I speak as God's prophet over this house that as you step out of this conference, such men are rising in your behalf in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. You don't have to pay for it. 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 I said you don't have to pay for it. Sit down for a bit. The Bible says with the woman with the issue of blood came to meet Jesus. Pressed within the crowd to touch the hem of his garment. But there's a sentence, a phrase there that's extremely important. She said she had spent all that she had and she rather grew worse. The problem many a times is that we think that if I have the money, then I can do it. That's the way we think many a times. But can I ask you a question? What she was trying to use money to pay for, did she get it without money? Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to renew our minds. James, you are one, one relationship away from a major breakthrough. Just one relation, just one person away. Just one person who says, I mean, I love what you're doing. I'm going to talk to one, two, three people, persons about you. Just one person. And I hope you know that it's an anointing of God's spirit. It's not your suit and your tie. It's an anointing of God's spirit that... He says that my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Everybody has an aroma in the spirit. Everybody has an aura in the spirit. Everybody. It either attracts or repels. It's never neutral. That you're unconscious of it does not mean it's not true. It's either it attracts or it repels. Everybody has an aura in the realm of the spirit. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Please sit down. It's just one person away. Just one person. And can I, can I ask you to look back into your life? You'll find out that some of your greatest breakthroughs was that somebody stepped in for you. Your biggest testimonies is that somebody that you did not manipulate... Not that you manipulated them and you tried to make them feel no. In the mercies of God, somebody just stepped in and said, I don't know why, but I want to do this. Your greatest breakthroughs will come from people. From people. Whilst you cannot manipulate people, we are not allowed of God to do that. We can set ourselves in such a way that people are attracted to us. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? There is an anointing, Zenaida, that attracts help. There's an anointing that attracts people. That's the anointing I'm placing on your life today. Amen. That's the anointing that I am placing on your life today. Amen. You all are witnesses in this church. How the Lord blessed us with 10,000 square meters. One person. I don't have that money in the account. I don't need to have it. Is somebody get what I'm saying? I don't need to have it. One person. He says, no, I have to do this. I have to do this. This is what the Lord is laying on my heart. Tosin, you don't need money. You don't need, you just need, you need favor with men. And favor with men is not Gucci suit or shoe. It's an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Somebody just listens to your song and says, listen, listen, listen. I, I, I don't know what it is. But what do you need? What do you need? Tell me every single thing you need. And when it is God, they don't take the glory for it. There's no sense of entitlement. Because he said, I will bless him that blesses you. They find out that it's actually a privilege they're involved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Many times we are laboring simply because the right people are not there. I stand as the prophet of God over this church... Your toils and labors are over. Oh, please, please listen to me. I know when I'm teaching a good message, 
I know when I've come here to declare a good word, but I'm standing here as a prophet of the Most High God. I'm standing here as a prophet of the Most High God. Any and everything that you dropped a sweat for, anything that you struggled about, I decree and I declare is. I decree and I declare rest in the name of Jesus. Listen, you are going to leave this convention and hear this. This is what I see. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This is what I see. I see you sitting down in the corner of your room, crying like a baby. Who am I or who is my father's house that you have blessed me this much? I, I, listen, I can see it crying like a baby. You have your handkerchief cleaning your nose. The whole floor is wet. You are crying and bawling like a baby. You just can't imagine men of repute, men of stature. You are wondering, where did they come from? How have they come here? How have they come here? I need to speak to someone. Some of you have enjoyed this on a certain level. But David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I know you have enjoyed it on a certain level, but I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Please sit down for a bit. Please sit down for a bit. Please sit down for a bit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is raising men in your behalf. In the name of Jesus. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 1. One day I was praying for someone. Please listen carefully to this story. The person had come in for counseling and it was around business that was really tough and really hard. I was praying, for, I mean, and then I was just counseling the person, talking with the person. I said, go, let me pray about this and I'll get back to you. And then, this was some years back. And then I was in prayer for this person. Well, I was praying about things generally, but then I said to pray about this person. And then the Lord showed me. He said, there, as it were, was a garment the person was wearing. And when people look, what they see is not what they should see. Oh, yes. It's called the face of the covering cast. I heard Bishop say something close to that. He said the church was not growing. He went to God in prayer three days. And then God showed him a layer of darkness over the church. And God said, he said, this is the layer of darkness with which Satan is misrepresenting, misinterpreting what I'm doing in this church. He said he commanded it to roll up in the name of Jesus. And then it rolled like a mat. And then boom, everything began to grow. You can be doing everything right. And there's as it were a face of a covering cast. Pastors are great, but prophets are deliverers. He sent his prophet that they might bring them out of Egypt. Are you following what I'm saying? Now? And I know full well my assignment this morning. Full well my assignment this morning. Full well my assignment this morning. Deliverance has come. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. The difference between the you that came for this conference and the you after will look like night and day. <laughs> like night and day. It will look like night and day. Why am I speaking these words? Because this is how you are anointed with fresh oil. This is how you are anointed with fresh oil. This is how it, the difference between the you that came into this conference and the you that will leave, that they will see. Emmanuel, I tell you the truth. As a prophet of the Most High God, I tell you the truth. It will look like night and day, like night and day. I tell you the truth. Glory to God. Let's look at 1 Chronicles 12. In five minutes, let's look at this and then we pray. It says, now these are they that came to David to Zik while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. 
and they were among the mighty men. What does he read next there? Helpers of the war. Show me helpers of the war. Now go to verse 18. Go to verse 18. Of that same First Chronicles chapter 12. Verse 18. You know, Apostle, we're, we're talking about something you had to do in another city, and I'm not going to go into the details. And he said, somebody just mentioned to somebody and said, oh, uh, it looks like Apostle wants to do this. And then it was a ridiculous deal. I mean, we're talking in, uh, we're in Akure at the time, I remember. We were on the phone, yes. I was flying back to Abuja, and we're talking. You remember the story? I don't want to go into the details. And something that was supposed to be so expensive at a bag, I mean, ridiculous thing. And I remember Pastor Jola said to me, he said, this is what you have been saying. Because people think that I need to go and get the money to be able to do it. Somebody just mentioned, ah, Apostle wants to do this. And then somebody took it upon themselves. Okay, we are going to do this for you. you it's not money you need. It's not money. I don't know where we got that idea. It's not money you need. It's not money you need. Is somebody getting what I'm saying here? Everything is just one person away, one relationship away. Everything is just one relationship away. Now, can I tell you the very interesting thing that you may not like? There are conversations that are not good about you going on. And sometimes you don't know those things have closed doors. Oh, yeah, you may not like it, but it's the truth. You are just not upset because you didn't hear them. But the blessing I've brought today is a twofold blessing. Every tongue that has risen against you will fall for your sake. We condemn every tongue that has risen against you. Apostles, I was praying and then the Lord showed this to me. He said, He will deliver you from the scourge of the tongue. There's something that's called the scourge of the tongue. He will deliver you from the scourge of the tongue. Should there be anybody here under the sound of my voice who is laboring, laboring, and doors are shut because of tongues that have worked against you? Now, hear this. The way you cast down tongues is to raise another tongue. The way you cast down altars is to raise a higher altar. The way you cast down names is to raise a higher name. He has given him a name that is higher than every other name. So once you find a name, find the higher name. I speak today under the authority of heaven. Every tongue that has spoken reason against you, I decree and I declare you are free from it. Every door that has been shut is now open unto you. Mark my words. By this time next week, supernatural doors. I'm telling you, you will get an email, you will get a phone call, you will get a phone call, you will be invited. Say this, my cup run it over. Can I tell you something? Apostle alluded to it yesterday. If you are invited and they want you to stay, they pour and they keep pouring, they keep pouring. God will use people to pour. So this running over thing, it's people that are pouring. It is God that anoints, but it's people that will pour. It is God that anoints, but it is people that will pour. Is somebody listen to what I'm saying here? Now, if this is good English or not, it does not matter, but your pourers are coming. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are going to pour wealth, they are going to pour help, they are going to pour counsel in the name of Jesus. Please sit down for a bit. Please sit down for a bit. Please sit down for a bit. I know full well what the Lord is doing. I know what the Lord said to me this morning as I prepared my heart. I know, f now you saw that I had come up stage and then I left. I know full well what the Lord is doing. I'm not, we are not, we are not following Cornelius device fables. We are not just trying to preach nice word and all the rest. 
You know, if we wanted to make it, I mean, if, if it's about teaching 10 hours, I'll keep you here for 10 hours. You'll be glad that you were kept. I mean, it doesn't take anything. But I know that right now, what the Lord is doing is, he's giving you a prophetic push. A prophetic push. Now, let's look at these scriptures here. He says, then the spirit came upon a Messiah who was the chief of the captains and he said, Die now we, David. Now, the spirit of the Lord is coming upon men in every nation of the earth. They are reaching out to you and they are saying, Dine are we, Tosi. Amen. 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 Oh. Amen. I, <laughs> uh, you, you, people, you people are still reading, Dine are we, David. Do you know what it means when he says, Dine are we? Do you know what it means when he says, Dine are we? We are bound by oaths. We are bound by covenants. Pastor Dan, men are joining themselves to you. They are saying, Die now we. Die now we. Die now we. Please, now look at this here. He says, Die now we, David, and on thy side, thou son of Jesse. He says, Peace, peace be unto thee. Peace be to thine helpers. For thy God helpeth thee. How does your God help thee? By sending helpers. He says, peace, peace be unto thee and peace be to thy neighbors. For thy God helpeth thee. Then David received them. Stretch out your hands now. This is a prophetic moment. Everybody, write out, out, not up, out. Stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. Say this, now in the name of Jesus. I receive my helpers. Now in the name of Jesus, I receive my helpers. Now in the name of Jesus, I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. They are pouring into my cup. They are pouring into my cup. Men and women under compulsion of God pouring into my cup, pouring into my cup, pouring into my cup, pouring till it overflows, pouring and pouring and pouring, pouring and pouring and pouring. Somebody with a loud voice go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. Uh, don't take this moment casually. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. I receive my helpers. Come on, you have one minute more. Go ahead and pray. I receive my helpers. I know you've had some help, but more help is coming. I know you've had some men, but more men are coming. In the name of Jesus. It says, Dine are we, dine are we, dine are we. We are under oath, we are under compulsion. Dine are we. Now, look at verse 22, 1222 of the same First Chronicles. And this is where I'm going to, because this is your story. For at that day, at that time, day by day, say with me, day by day. Come on, say with me, day by day. Are you reading? Are you reading what I'm reading? Day by day. There came to Ayo to help him until he was a great host, like the host of God. <laughs> ah. 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 Shout it day by day. Shout it day by day. Hold on. 
Hold on. Hold on. The help that he was receiving of the Lord that God sent him, was he half cup? Was he full cup? What was it? Can I ask you a question? Can you number the host of heaven? And yet the help that God gave to a man was like unto the host of heaven. Is there anybody who is large enough to receive this this morning? Day by day. I said day by day. Day by day. Just a second. Can I have this in the Amplified Classic and the Message Translation? The Amplified Classic, the Message and the NLT. Whichever one you can give us first. Something is shifting here. For at that time, day by day, men kept coming to David. Say this, men are coming, men are coming. Men keep coming, they keep coming. Ah, I said they keep coming, they keep coming. They keep coming. Chidi, where are you? They keep coming, where are you? They keep coming. The Lord just showed you to me. Day by day, they keep coming. Said the Spirit of the Lord. Day by day, they keep coming. Day by day, they keep coming. Men keep coming day by day. They keep coming in the name of Jesus. Day by day, they keep coming. 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 Until there was a great army like the army of God. Can we have the message translation? Can we have the message translation? The Lord is anointing you this morning. What is the result? Your cup of help is running over. Are you following what I'm saying here? Do we have the message translation? Verse 22. Hardly a day went by without men showing up to him. You know what I want you to do? I want you to write out this scripture and put it everywhere you can see it. Put it on your phone and remind yourself, hardly a day went by without men showing up to help me. It wasn't long before my band seemed as large as God's own army. Hardly a day went by. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say with me day by day. Please sit down for a bit. Your cup is overflowing. I know what I know. I know what I know what I heard. Your cup is overflowing. Every ministry that has labored and labored and seen little, your cup is overflowing. I know what I'm saying. I know what I'm saying. Oh, and by the way, the husbandman, which is me, is the first partaker of this word. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your cup is overflowing. Let me show you a very interesting scripture. I've shared it once or twice before in this church. A sobering scripture, but powerful scripture. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 30. Thank you, Lord. You know what Esau sought with cries and tears? Old man, 40-something years of age, weeping and bawling like a child. He says, Father, please bless me too. Bless me too. Bless me too. Words, just words. All the father gave his brother were words, but he knew that by reason of those words, somebody here is prevailing. Somebody here is prevailing. That word just entered my spirit. I, I sense that you are prevailing against certain walls. I sense that it is walls of limitations. You are prevailing mightily against them. Prevailing mightily. Prevailing mightily. Thank you, Lord. Whether you like it or not, you are blessed. Satan's greatest error was to get you into this place. You may not wear the perfume intentionally, but because you are around when they sprayed it, you will smell. (laughs) 
The field, my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. I, I hope you know there are smells that repels you. You sit down in a closed room and somebody releases it. Quietly so. <laughs> One day I was in a church. <laughs> I sat on the front row and I think somebody just released it. I couldn't close my nose because I was guest minister. But I, kept, I, I said, what do I do here? There are smells that repel. So when he says that my son is like the field that the Lord has smells like it, there are smells that attract. That's what is happening here. You're just going to walk into a place and you just smell so good to them, so good to them. They are just in love with you. So good to them. So good to them. My God. I just saw angels ascending and descending. Are you getting what I'm saying? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Sit down for a bit. First Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have two conferences in the year. We have Rain Conference, a charismatic renewal conference. Focus, raising witnesses for the Lord. Supernatural, in the supernatural and with great utterance. And so people live charged and stirred up for the kingdom. Brother Higgins said the reason many times we are not so effective is that we are not clear on the purpose. So we just organize meetings for the sake of organizing meetings. I know what that is for. I know what this is for. God said to me, he said, the festival is where I will deliver the inheritances of my children to them. So I know what this is for. I know what it is for. I know what it's for. Billionaires are coming out of this church. Billionaires. Billionaires. Billionaires are coming out of this church. I believe that with all of my heart. An apostle has taught us the overflow is to spread into others. You must make up your mind from now. Not after it happens. From now. From now. From when we had one car, we were giving cars out. Not when we had two, when we had one. I was in a meeting like this. You sat beside me and I said, the Lord just asked for that car. You remember? Immediately. Called the guy. I said, please, get me a good bargain on this now. We added money to it, sent in the seed. It wasn't because we had another car to go back to. No. No, it wasn't that we had another car to go back to. One day I was just rejoicing and I said, Lord, thank you. I've, I mean, at, at the count, we had given four cars to the gospel. I want to thank you. And then I heard that Brother Copeland has given 13 airplanes. You, you are shouting that um, prosperity gospel. They are buying private jets. Somebody is giving out 13. You know some people, eh? it's not that Satan caused them or anybody caused them. It's they are thinking that curses them. How can you be comfortable that a human being has given out 13 airplanes? How can... How, she could jail her journey. How can you be comfortable? That's in. Ah, we will do. We will do much more. <laughs> we will do much more. We will do much more. I mean, my whole being, I feel like tearing my clothes, even just saying it. That's in the airplanes. I mean, the, I don't understand. Is it the same Bible we are reading? Can you ever be comfortable and join them to say nonsense? One day the Lord said something very powerful to me. I was flying into the city. I was in the plane. And the word floated into my consciousness. He says, they limited the Holy One of Israel. And the Lord said to me, he said, you have limited me. That's where that series, Bounty and Capacity, came from. I, I shared with you. I was already seeing Abuja and I heard the word of the Lord. He said, you have limited me. That's where that phrase came out from. What you have is not what I can do. Is what you have received. It's not what I can do. It's what you have received. You have limited me. You have limited me. But well, thank God a band and a company is arising from this place who don't think anything is too good for them. Did you hear what I said? They don't think that anything is too good for them. They don't think that anything is too big for them. At the back of their mind, they know it's for the kingdom. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. 
So can people be praying for something and not be willing for it? Yes. People can be praying for abundance and they are not willing for it. Somewhere at the back of their minds, I don't want them to call me a prosperity preacher. I don't want them to start saying that me to have backsliding. We are holiness people. We are the people who have kept the statues of God. Statue call. Shop on on. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying here? Nothing is too big for us. You know, you're the one that says that, oh, maybe when I'm 35 or when I'm 40, then I've qualified and I'm old enough to have it. It's you that said it to. It's you that said it to. It's you that said it to. I hope you know that the prince that is born in the palace is not thinking that way. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please sit down for a bit and let's explore why this gift of human help is critical for us. In this scripture here, the Bible tells us that David had gone to war. You know the story? David, his men were come to Ziklag on the third day. And as they had gone to war, the Amalekites invaded the south, Ziklag, smitten Ziklag, and burnt it with fire. So by the time David and his men came back, their wives, their children, and all of their properties had been raided and taken away. Now, whoever is on the scripture, just run with it while I run commentaries on it. Had been taken away. And the Bible says that the people were so distressed for what had happened. You can imagine you went to war, and by the time you come back, war had ravaged your own place. Now, can we go back to the previous verses? It says that the people spoke, spoke of stoning David. They were going to stone him. They were so distressed. The Bible says that David was so distressed by what was happening, but he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then the scripture tells us that he asked for Abiata, bring the effort. Verse 8, jump to verse 8. It says, bring the effort. Let me ask of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. Everybody read what the Lord said. He says, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them and without fail recover all. What did God say to him? Pursue. You shall overtake them and you shall recover all. Am I right? This will bless you tremendously. It will bless you tremendously. Look at the next thing that happens here, verse 9. Quickly. So David went here and the 600 men that were with him, they came to the brook Bessor. They left some here. Some went ahead with him. Go quickly to the next verse, verse 10. Verse 11, quickly. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. Who did they find? An Egyptian. Am I right? Look at the next verse. And they gave him a piece of cake figs, two clusters of raisins. It's good food though. I've studied this in the Hebrew. It's good food. Even now, raisin. How many times do you eat raisin in your house? <laughs> it's good food. Egyptian without a name. Look at what he says. He says, when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. Like I was saying somewhere. It's not every food that can revive spirits. It must have been some special meal. He says, for he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water three days and three nights. Next verse. David said to him, to whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to an Amalekite, who invaded Ziklag, Amalek. Who did God say to David to pursue and overtake Amalek? He says, my master left me because three days are gone. I fell sick. Next verse. We made an invasion upon the south of the Cherites, upon the coast. We burned Ziklag with fire. Next verse, verse 15, quickly. And David said unto him, canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, swear unto me by God that you neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I'll bring you down to this company. God said, pursue, overtake. But it's a man that will bring you to the company. Pursue, overtake. Is it possible that there are many people God has said, pursue, overtake. And they are pursuing, but they are not overtaking anything. Because the right man, and sometimes they are not dressed in the overalls you're expecting. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Sometimes they are not dressed in the overalls that you're expecting. I hope you know that David would have labored and struggled 
even though he had a word hanging over his head. He may have had to go back to God in three days prayer and fasting to say, oh God, did you not say pursue and overtake? What's going on? What's going on? Could it mean that if he did not find this man who was going to give him the counsel he needed, prophecy may have failed. Is somebody still here this morning? God will say pursue. He will send men to show you where to. Is somebody get what I'm saying? This is important. <laughs> and I can tell you for free that what the Lord is doing. Oh, by the way, there are different kinds of people God will bring into your life. Men with counsel. This is a man with counsel. Men with counsel. Who bring you counsel? Men with skill. Who bring their skills to get the work done? Men with stature. Who use their position and their office to stamp your work? And everybody needs it. Somebody who sits down in the corridors of power and says, this person is the only one that must be the contractor. Are you following what I'm saying? All the different kinds of people that God will bring your way. And I know you are overflowing with that in this season. I said you are overflowing with that in this season. Let's wrap up with some very practical instructions here. Because if we're going to take advantage of this thing that the Lord is doing, remember it's not a good teaching, it's a prophetic teaching showing you your future. If we're going to take advantage of this thing that the Lord is doing, we have to ask ourselves, why is it that not many people walk in this? The Bible says that David's host became as unto the host of heaven. Day by day. Could it mean that God is sending us people day by day? And we may be missing it. You know, I said something. Some of you may think that, is that not far-stretched? But it's true. I said prophecies fail because the right men are not there. Prophecies will fail if the right men are not in the equation. Okay. I always will give this example. You know, Abraham did not have to wait 25 years. God encountered him at 75. He had a child at 100. He did not have to wait 25 years to have Isaac. We know he started out with his body being dead. But then the Bible tells us that he fathered a child called Ishmael. So that means at some point, fate had kicked in and he had the capacity, capacity to father a child. Sarah needed to be in faith herself as well, not just Abraham. That's why in Hebrews 11, he had accounts of Abraham's faith and it accounts of Sarah's faith. By faith, Sarah received strength to conceive seed. Now, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If she received strength to conceive seed by faith, when did she hear? It was the 99th year of Abraham's life. Three men were strolling down the street and Abraham just said, don't let them go like that. Bring them into the house. Let's feed them. Fola, could it mean that if Abraham did not bring those three people into the house to feed them, there would have been no occasion for Sarah to have heard the word of faith. Because it was in that occasion that Abraham found out that it's God I'm feeding. God said, where is your wife? Oh, she's there. Tell her, by this time next year, according to the season of life, she shall have a child. She laughed. But God was not waiting for her to scream and be excited. He just needed a principle to be fulfilled. Faith cometh by hearing. Yes. Just hear. Yes. Yes. Because she couldn't, God could not work with what Abraham was telling her. He had to work with what she heard from him. And immediately she heard, she conceived. The next year, she had a child. All because Abraham saw three people walking down the street and said, come and eat. Is it possible that there are prophecies and blessings hanging over our head and we have pushed the people who will bring the fulfillment away? Is it possible? Is it possible that God at one point told you, pay the school fees of your gate man? And that was going to be an open door to something. You have to understand this in God. Because it's not always 
does not always look like the effect. Apostle showed us that. Thou anointest my head with oil. What's the relationship with cop? What's the relationship with killing the fatted calf and Sarah having a child? What's the relationship? Stop following God with your mind. Stop trying to understand everything. How does this, how does this affect my ministry? So how is this going to change my finances? Stop following him with your mind. I've shared this over and over again, that we understand God in retrospect. Yes, it is when we look back that we say, oh, this is why he said so. Is somebody following what I'm saying? Yes, How do you find an Egyptian, a literally dead man, and bring him to the king? And the king is not screaming on you that I'm looking for my wife and my mm. children. Mm. Are you people out of your mind? Would you get out of here? They wanted to stone me to death. You are bringing me a man in rags. Mm. David discerned. Mm. Give him food. Mm. Give him food. Awaken his spirit. Who are you? Observe, he didn't say, do you know the Amalekites? Mm. If he was dressed like an Amalekite, we'll understand. Mm. He was an Egyptian. Yes. In essence, he didn't look like the people they were looking for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. David just discerned I heard B. Winston say this. He said, one of the things God has to bless the church with and God is doing in the church in the last days is discernment. Your ability to trace the hand of God in the natural situations of your life. Yes, sir. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here it is. You are leaving this mountain a changed man. Amen. You are leaving this place as a territorial authority. Amen. You are living this place with territorial dominion. Are you, for, are you hearing what I'm saying here? Three practical things we have to look into. Number one is you have to notice that there are demonic manipulations that keeps help away from people. But you know what I found out? The easiest to deal with is demons. Or oh, is the easiest to deal with. That keeps help away from people. Please be seated. That keeps help away from people. They are demonic manipulations. Demonic manipulations. You are saying one thing, they are hearing another. <laughs> are you following what I'm saying here? You are advertising something, they are seeing something else. Now, everybody look at me. How many of you have had a situation where you interacted with somebody by yourself and you said, this is not what they told me about this person. Like, hey, she's so different. Now, could it mean that there were times you may have rendered help, or because of what you helped, you said, no, 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 not this person. Manipulations of the enemy. Are you following what I'm saying? Here? And then by the time you relate with him, you say, ah, Andrea is not like this after all. Ah, for is she's actually a sweet girl. Where did they get that notion from? Is it possible that there are such many? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, but it's easiest to deal with. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve, should there be anybody laboring under any form of such demonic manipulations? I break that yoke today. Yeah. Your helper shall see you and recognize you. Yeah. And they shall be under compulsion to bring help. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two. And this is the more difficult one. Difficult because it has to deal with us. Toxic character. Character. Many people have chased their overflow away by their character. Honor all men. Honor all men. Not for what they can do, but because they are men. In the image and the likeness of God. You have no idea who God will use. Are you following what I'm saying here? The church has to wake up to this. We can have the faith of Jesus with respect of persons. Let your heart be filled with generosity towards people. You are just always looking for how to be of help. Not for what you can receive. 
not for what you can get. It's a training of your heart because God will use, hear this? God will use situations and people who have no direct impact on your life to train you for those who have direct impact. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. God will use situations and people who have no direct impact on your life to train you for those who have a direct impact, which means you are generous and kind to him, 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 generous and kind to him. None of them has any direct impact on your life. Looks as though you are just a good, good person. But you, what you don't know is this. In that lineup, there will be one that you may not know who it is. But because this is who you are. You are not training for that person. It is who you are. I don't think that's the first time Abraham was feeding people. How can you ask to bring out a fatted calf? And Sarah did not say, mm. I'm sure they had fattened a lot of cows. Sarah said, hey, oh yeah, kill again. But this particular time was destiny time. God will use people and situations to train you who have no direct impact. Direct impact. You will do things and there's no return as it were. You are doing things and there's no return. Not because they can say thank you or whatever it is. But God is using it to train you. Because where help will come from many times does not look like it. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? So character. Apostle spoke to us about character management. You must like people. You must love people. Genuinely be interested in people. Genuinely be interested in helping people. Eliminate all competition from your mind. Eliminate all comparison from your mind. Don't withhold help because you think they'll be better. You know, people many times only want to help those that they know are not as good as them. Because it becomes a bargaining chip. No. Just be full of help. A man that will have friends must show himself friendly. A man that will have help must show himself helpful. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? So the adjustments we must make in our lives. It can't be about me, my wife, and I alone. No. It can't be about you, your wife, alone. Not at all. Number three, which is directly related to this, is sowing the seeds of mercy. Sowing the seeds of mercy. Directly related to number two, where you're pouring help into people. Because you are the help somebody's looking for. Are you following what I'm saying? Oh, by the way, everybody here is the help that somebody else is looking for. Everybody. Everybody here is the help that somebody else is looking for. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Help us come. In the name of Jesus. Now, stand up and raise your two hands towards heaven. And this is the instruction. Please listen very carefully to me. I'm going to release words of blessings in just a bit. But I want you to pray out with your loudest voice in the spirit. You pray out loud with your loudest voice in the spirit. You pray out loud with your loudest voice in the spirit. 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 It's an overflowing cup. It's an overflowing cup. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands and pray in the spirit.
In the name of Jesus, you have prayed. From today, day by day, men join themselves to help you. From today, till you see the Lord haven't been raptured or you live to a ripe full age as you have desired, there will never be a day that you lacked help. Today I bless you with discernment. You will not miss your open doors. You will not miss your help. Right now, let voices of authority begin to speak in your favor. Let goodwill arise amongst men for you. Let favor begin to speak for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Places you have no access to, your name shall be heard. Places you have not gotten, people shall speak in your behalf. In the name of Jesus. Questions shall be asked in the, tr in the throne rooms. Questions shall be asked in the palaces. And men will answer that you are the solution. Pharaoh needed an answer, but the butler said Joseph is the answer. The king lost his sleep. Is there anybody we have not rewarded? Then they mentioned Mordecai. I decree and I declare that in the throne room and in the corridors of power, your name shall be called as answers to questions. There are three levels that people enjoy provision where God meets their needs, where God expands them. But one of the most sustainable is when God connects you to a national, to a na to national wealth. God brings you like Joseph into it, Daniel into it, not just on a personal level. I see men and women rising out of this church who are answers to governments of nations. <laughs> by the word of the Lord, you shall be sent for, for by the palace. Governments of nations shall send for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise and we bless you. Go ahead and bless this God. Go ahead and bless this God. Go ahead and bless this God. Oh, if you received something, I think you can bless him better than this. Go ahead and bless this God. Oh, it's not interlude. It's not how we end the prayer. It's part of the process. It's part of the process. It's part of it all. Go ahead and bless him. Go ahead and bless him. From the first night till now, what he's been doing in your life. Go ahead and bless him. The first word today, the impact, the metamorphosis, the weight of glory that rested. To the second word, go ahead and bless him. Go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him praise. Go ahead and give him praise. Somebody do a dance. Somebody rejoice. Somebody rejoice. These words that have been spoken are heavy words. These are heavy words. Believe the word. It says, believe the Lord, you shall prosper. You shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. You shall break forth. 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 Ah, somebody needs to rejoice. Animatedly. 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 Shelevero Comberia Comelege Casos of Fretegate Shadabere Catelebeke Rotolomo Shadegabaya Shagadagadagadagabaya Regatolobo Cosotolobo Regate Canabosh 
Rejoice, 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 rejoice,
Specialized sessions, all eyes closed. We're supposed to have businessmen sessions. And the Lord said to me, He said, By reason of all the sessions we've had, He said, I've settled their case, I've settled their matter. So, any business person, that's what the Lord says to say to you. Now, those believing for the fruit of the womb or standing in for anybody, this is what the Lord is saying to you. In nine months, you will dance at this altar. In nine months. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whose I am and whom I serve, womb open. I command life into your bodies. Both husband and wife. Everything that is dead come alive now. Nine months time you return with your bouncing baby. And you'll be singing Esheo, 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 Oh yes, Emashe. We give you praise and we bless you. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Say this to me. This is my festival. Jesus. 